Every year, the amount of non-space industries that begin to take interest and see advantage of pursuing space research and exploration grows and grows. But there is still so much unseen potential. Director of Slovak Space Office's industry branch, Mikhail Brigta, is here to discuss. Thank you for joining me, Mikhail. Tell me about the space big picture. What's that initiative about? Thanks for having me. Good morning. Uh, so uh, the Space the Big Picture is a new initiative by the IAF, uh, which uh, I was uh, uh, lucky to be uh, given to, to lead as uh, the Vice President of Global Membership Development. Uh, so it, it begins with how the space sector has been evolving over the past decade. So it has evolved into something that is uh, uh, directly linked with how we developed our economy, how we protect the environment, uh, how we also take care of the society. And uh, these uh, developments uh, have uh, increased the number of stakeholders that are directly linked to space. They are directly either uh, contributing uh, to the development of space sector by providing uh, certain services, certain uh, uh, added value or even investment or they are significantly benefiting from space technology as the uh, major users of satellite data, a variety of organizations working on sustainability or safety topics. So in, in the IAF we, we decided to acknowledge and reflect the, these, these developments, these shifts, and we created the Space the Big Picture platform, which aims at connecting the traditional core space sector as, as we have known it uh, for, 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 for decades. So the key stakeholders, the, the governmental agencies, the, the core space industry, research organizations, universities, and, and intergovernmental or non-governmental organizations that are core to the space sector. With this uh, broadening and uh, increasing uh, in variety uh, stakeholder group uh, that is uh, linked to space and it's increasingly important and playing increasingly important role. Yeah, for sure. Looking ahead, which non-space industries do you think will have the greatest impact on the future of sp space exploration and commercialization? So at the, the first uh, Space the Big Picture Summit two days ago, we, we discussed this particular question as well. And uh, the, the interesting uh, was that the, the, the answers, although they, they were uh, they, they vary, but uh, the topic of cybersecurity uh, came up uh, quite often. So it's it, it's it's clear that uh, securing the, the the satellite technologies, uh, securing the data that are coming from satellites, securing the communication, will play an increasingly important role. We will need to pay a lot of attention to making sure that that it's secure, that it's reliable and uh, it's accessible just to those stakeholders that should access that data. Well, some fascinating stuff. Thank you so much for your time, Mikhail. Thank you for having me. Now I have Director of IAC 2025, Lisa Vitaris, with me to weigh in. Thank you so much for joining me, Lisa. What are we seeing with non-space industries entering the space industry? Has it increased? It absolutely has. And at IEC 2025 Sydney, we are actually bringing it to this event for the first time ever. So we're really excited by all of the industries and what they're doing in space, for example, mining and agriculture and emergency services. And I think it's really catching on in other broader fields as well. So we're really looking to amplify that and make sure that other sectors know that there are plenty of benefits of space that they can use for their own industries. On that, can you give me an example of an industry that surprised benefited from entering into the space industry? Yeah look I think a fantastic example is the mining sector so in Australia mining makes up around 12 to 13 percent of our gross domestic product so it's really absolutely critical for our economy and if you think about it the conditions in the mining sector are almost as difficult as they are on moon and Mars and in space so very remote, very deep um, underground and similar conditions. So I think um, we're really good at remote operations in uh, mining and we can use that for applications in space and vice versa, space can be used for mining. We have companies now in Australia 
like fleet space that can actually, forgive my lack of technical uh, description for this, but they can actually see through the ground about 10 kilometres to determine where the mines are these days without even drilling, which is really exciting with their technology. So there's so much exciting benefits for both mining and space and also the environment. What role do partnerships between traditional space players and non-space companies play in accelerating innovation? Do you have any examples of this? Yeah, look, where it's really exciting for Australia. So we've actually had, we're the country who has had the first commercial return in the world. So the first commercial return from space. So we have a spaceport in South Australia called Southern Launch, and they're roughly the size of Belgium or bigger. So it's a fantastic amount of land. Um, we're a very safe country, so you can make sure that your spacecraft is returning safely and you can get whatever the contents are on your payload returned to Earth in a safe way. They worked in partnership with VADA, and VADA um, had some pharmaceutical experiments in their spacecraft, and they launched it and then were able to return it safely through to Southern Launch, and they've done that twice now, and there's a third one underway. So it's very exciting that we can actually be a part of the pharmaceutical uh, innovation within Australia. Yeah, a lot of exciting things in the works. Thank you so much for your time, Lisa. Thank you so much, appreciate it.